Well, you're welcome to the details. Yesterday, we reported about tension that's mounting in uh, parts of the capital. Today, we, we can report that the tension is still mounting in parts of the capital where alleged members of the governing new patriotic party are on one page and seizing government installations. Now, we can focus on Agmogloshi, where residents in that slum community began deserting their homes this morning following a clash between activists of the NPP and NDC. My colleague Joseph Akable was there and joins me now in the studio. Of course, we bring you the pictures. Joseph, you're welcome once again. Thank you're you. safe yourself? <laughs> I mean, I have, to, I have to stay a distance away to ensure okay. that I was quite safe. I mean, uh, it's a bit of a tense situation there, but mm. it's been, I think, I should assume it's been managed quite well. Managed quite well. So you went to Agogoshi this morning. Yes. Tell us what you saw before we, we, we show viewers uh, what we got to show them from the camera. Uh, so first and foremost, um, it has to do with the fact that when we got there, uh, we realized that there were quite a number of police officers uh, stationed at that place there in different parts of the market. Moving through the market, you get a sense of they going around and ensuring that everything is safe. We also saw another crowd control vehicle of the police officers positioned very close to the entrance of the main market. Now, apart from that, we're just watching and realized that some few meters away, there's a particular place where a uh, roofing sheet of a sort has been used to put up a shed. Uh, where you had some uh, persons who were uh, supposed to be members of the MPP because that shirt is painted MPP colors. They were gathered there having a meeting of a sort. Okay. Some few minutes after the meeting, they moved over, over and before we realized, there's this uh, car wash place or a washing bay like we normally uh, refer to it as. Mm. Uh, what we don't understand clearly is whether it's a public facility because we don't know such places to be public facilities. Okay. But, before but it's we realized, a washing bay. It's a washing bay. Okay. Before we realized, uh, this gentleman had masked up at that point and they started picking up equipment from that place. So we were about 200 meters away, uh, the police car control van had to move over to that side to try and uh, move them away from that place. Mm. But they were unsuccessful. Eventually, the gentleman managed to leave. They outnumbered the police, actually. Wow. They managed to move away from the How police. How many police personnel were there? Uh, they were less than 10. They were less, less than, than 10. 10 police And then these people point. are about? About 30 of them. Wow. About 30 of them. So eventually, uh, they had to move the gentleman away. But they left with those equipment. So at the point when I was leaving uh, that place, uh, the place was not working now in terms of the normal activity that's supposed yes. to take place. The place was completely empty because the equipment had been moved away from that place. So that was the situation at that side. I also okay. took a bit of a look at the passport office as well. Mm. Let's go to Agbogloshi and see what you've got from Agbogloshi. And then when we return from Agbogloshi, then we can go to the passport office. And so, um, like I said, just um, uh, Joseph has been to Agbogloshi. And this is what he brought from there. Old Fadama, Ghana's largest slum, home to more than 80,000 people, but now a community on the brink. Political violence has been similar. Collect our access, toilet, shower, and then uh, rooms. They collect all NDC people. So now we get power and we come back to say to go around and collect everything. We we are we are just do, they here MPP NDC. So the time where they declare it and they, they're just cutting MPP people, but you have already know it. And they kill our brothers here, belongs to the police station. Three bro our brothers, they kill them there. What this camera won't tell you is the sheer level of tension that is currently building up here. On the surface, this looks like just a fight between the NPP and then the NDC. But what I've also learned is that this is just a, a case of settling old scores based on long-standing tribal differences between the major ethnic groups that live here. We know it's about the chieftaincy problems. We know. But, you know, when it goes to higher this thing, people want to do it like it's political, this thing, and it's like that. And we know for a fact that underground is when you are Abudu, they set you as NPP when you are Andani, you, they see you as NDC. So NDC coming to power, the Andani's youth, 
is is like that. This is what the grassroots is taking the whole thing, is, uh, which is very is not good for the health of this country. In 2009. The last time transition-related violence happened here, many fled, scores were killed, but none of the perpetrators were successfully prosecuted. But this time, how is this new tension affecting the lives of ordinary people? This 45-year-old man asked me to hide his identity before agreeing to speak to me. He's been living in Old Fadama for more than 10 years, but now fears for his life. People are living in fear, and uh, it's like they will, they will want to fight back if they are attacked. And you never can tell how it will spill over to other people, innocent people. And that is why we think it's serious. For example, if any fight breaks up around where I am now, you never can tell where a stray bullet or whatever can go. The party foot soldiers are storing up today's trouble for a possible explosion in the future. Old Fadama's woes is just an example of how the inability of Ghana's security to deal with political violence has spilled over. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Old Fadama. Well, sincere apologies for that, but that was the situation yesterday, and that is the beautiful report put together by Justice Beidou there. Um, that story you could corroborate, but has there been any significant change in the situation as of today when you left there? It hasn't appeared to have changed much. I mean, the only thing that we could say is a bit different is the fact that there are uh, personnel from the Ghana Police Service available, but we know for a fact that this irate youth going about terrorizing people are still moving in a various neighborhood. They are moving from point to point. And the understanding that we got on the ground is the fact that uh, some persons who are perceived to be members of the NDC, they have, as a result of that, had to move away to mm. other parts. And it was very difficult getting people to engage uh, because if you're going to speak to someone, they want to identify where exactly you're coming from. And they didn't seem to be very media friendly as well. Okay. Well,